everyone. Um, uh, welcome to our op October membership briefing. I am uh, Michael Chodas. My pronouns are he, him. I'm the marketing and membership coordinator with Americans for the Arts. I am a millennial white man with short brown hair. I have on round frame glasses and I'm wearing a dark blue collared shirt with a little red shirt underneath. I'm seated, seated in the ancestral and current lands of the Piscataway people in Hyattsville, Maryland. Uh, we've got a quick, great pro program planned today. I'm excited to get started, but first a few quick reminders. Uh, please note that this presentation is being recorded. Uh, the recording will be available in a few business days on the activity page, and then it will be posted up at YouTube shortly after that. Uh, an automated live transcript is available for viewing, as I'm sure some folks will see it uh, talking as I am talking right down there. Um, so if you'd like to turn it on or off, you press the CC or closed captions button at the bottom of your screen and then select show or hide subtitles. Resources for today's activity will be posted under the resources tab on today's event page. Uh, there will be time for questions at the end of the discussion between uh, Mandy and India. Um, and you can submit those questions to the Q&A function, which is also on that bottom bar. Uh, should you need any technical assistance today, please put that into that chat box or um, more over the Q&A box, and I'll be happy to help follow you up. Um, and with that, I am pleased to pass on to my wonderful colleague, Mandy Lee, who is the Senior Membership Manager. Hello, thank you so much, Michael. Um, as you said, my name is Mandy Lee, she, her, and I'm a white woman in my 30s with dark hair and eyes, and I'm wearing a lilac sweater. I'm seated on a gray couch in front of white curtains, and I'm calling today from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Dogue and Piscataway people, past and present, who have stewarded the land now known as Alexandria, Virginia, for generations. Again, this is a member briefing for the Americans for the Arts. We are a national service organization working to ensure that every American has access to the transformative power of the arts. And to that end, a recording of this meeting will be shared publicly on YouTube to allow for more people to engage with this celebration of arts and humanities. Uh, for those of you joining us live, just a reminder that we will have some time for questions. So feel free to put those in the Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. I'm so excited to introduce our guest for today's conversation, this year's National Arts and Humanities Ambassador, India Carney. India, thank you so much for joining us. Yay, thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, before we get started, um, I want to give you a moment to introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about your role as ambassador. Yeah, sure. Um, well, my name is India Carney. Um, I um, I deeply celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day and 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 try to do my due diligence to support uh, the community as much as as I can. I don't know what ancestral lands I'm on right now, but um, I'm in Atlanta, and uh, well, this whole country belonged to Native people. Um, so I'm really happy to be here. Um, and I am a singer songwriter, vocal producer, uh, voice coach on occasion as well. Um, actually, that's why I'm here in Atlanta to do vocal coaching. And I'm really honored to be the arts ambassador for, for Americans for the Arts. Thank you for having me. This is wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I want to get started uh, just sharing with our members a little more about you. So could you tell me a little bit about how music was a part of your life growing up? Sure. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, so it's a very artsy city and yeah, the arts are just very accessible, especially to younger kids, lots of community programs, summer programs and all that stuff. So I grew up taking music classes from the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music in Park Slope, which is just minutes away from where I grew up in Crown Heights. And shortly after I joined community choirs, I took piano and flute lessons elementary school I was in the band and the choir and then went on to middle school and uh, high school and on I also uh, sang in my church choir growing up so and then yeah summer music camps uh, eventually I went to Manhattan School of Music's pre-college division uh, in high school so I'd say pretty much from like two months onward I was in an arts program and uh, New York made that really, really easy. That's amazing to hear about all those kinds of programs. Mm -hmm. um, were those largely things that were provided through the school system or things that your family found on their own? 
uh, in a lot of ways, things that my family found on my own, but um, you know, I went to music schools, so music was embedded in the curriculum already, which is great. I went to uh, Mark Twain Middle School uh, when it was a when it was a gifted and talented school geared towards artists, and then I went to LaGuardia Arts High School in, uh, in the heart of New York City. So, yeah, it was easy. I went to art school, so that was part of the curriculum, and then any outside programs was. Yeah, mostly my parents finding stuff for me to do. That's amazing. And now mm-hmm. you obviously, among the many things that you do is you do some vocal education professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you come to that other than being a performer yourself, but sort of bringing that educational element into your professional career? I think, I think, I think there are many reasons that I eventually came over to the education circuit, but I know one was, um, you know, I'd see my friends getting vocal damage left and right throughout my college years. And of course that concerned me just as their friend, but I feel like if anyone was going to hurt themselves, it could have been me because I was just so involved with everything. Um, Just general physical fatigue does a huge number on your, on your voice. And when you're a college student, not sleeping, or eating that much, that alone can ruin things. And I was always like, hmm, I mean, like, thank you, but how did I make it out alive? And I credit that to my classical training. So I think after making that realization, I just wanted to make sure I could give back to people as much as I could. Also, my teachers have made a huge impact on me growing up and and I, I deeply value that. So over the years, as I've realized that I can have that kind of impact on aspiring musicians, especially singers, I would like to to keep that a consistent thing in my life, uh, working with singers, musicians, uh, and, and being a mentor for them. I think that's great. And I, I love how you also tied in health, because it's something that we talk mm-hmm. about in National Arts and Humanities Month is how arts are a big part of sort of public health and the public good, but there's also, I think, a big topic to be had about artists and how artists take care of their bodies and their instruments, mm-hmm. um, that be their hands, their voice, their bodies, whatever that is, and that that's not always a priority for artists. Um, mm-hmm. Access to healthcare isn't always something that's easy for artists. So I, I think yeah. that's a really important thing that uh, that you bring up today. I'd love to hear a little bit more about kind of how you got into the profession, you know, moving from being a music student and an artist in your in your own right, but moving into that becoming your professional career. How did that start? Hmm. Well, it it did start back when I was like almost out of the womb. My mom found these mommy and me classes at the Brooklyn Conservatory. And that's technically where I started, if I'm not mistaken. And um the tale is that she learned a long time ago that music has a, a positive impact on academics as a student. So she was like, I really want her to be good in school. So here's music. And I ended up being great in school. And I don't think either of us expected for me to take so strongly to it. But by the time I was nine, I knew that this was what I wanted to do. I was in a um, <clears throat> production of Annie and I played Annie and just like one of our rehearsal days, I was just standing downstage feeling like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I remember that feeling uh, strongly. And so ever since then, um, my family and I just looked for ways for me to be involved in in music. And I'd say we did a pretty good job. Um, I ended up going to UCLA to get my bachelor's degree in voice performance and a minor in music industry and I think overall over the years they just let me follow my heart and my heart always led me to formal music settings where I got to learn from really great teachers so um yeah that's that's how I I mean that's how I got here I'm sure there's a more detailed uh, trajectory, but it was just me following my heart and where I wanted to be. And and then that led me here, 
Henley. Something that I think is interesting about our membership base is we have a pretty broad range of people who are members. We have people who are practitioners. We have people who are working on the administrative side, people who their focus is grants or all these different kinds of things. And I think something that can be exciting and challenging about that is that we have people from a lot of different viewpoints who don't always necessarily see the other the other parts of the, the arts field. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear a little bit about what are some things that are part of your either daily life or sort of usual life as a musician that you think people might not know about what it's like to be a musician professionally? That's a great question. It It can be really daunting to be a professional musician especially if you have set expectations for your life and your career, because it's never going to go that way. I think the thing that could surprise people is that I wear a lot of hats. Every creative probably wears a lot of hats because you have to be, you have to be creative and innovative with money-making opportunities. Um, And I think a thing that I learned the hard way is like, Throughout my whole life, my curriculum's been set. I go to LaGuardia. I'm in the musicals. I've got the composition classes, open mics, whatever it is, it's all at my disposal. And I just have to audition for it, if at all. Um, And uh, because, because, you know, some things are audition based and some things are just like, you just come and you do it. And then after you graduate, it's not like that at all. You expect a lot more than you get. And after you get past that learning curve, you realize you just, you you have to, and you also are very qualified to create your own opportunities. So as a musician in Los Angeles, I'm a background singer. I hop around to a bunch of different camps and uh, uh, so yeah, I sing for a bunch of different people and a, diff- a bunch of different productions like The Ellen Show, Jimmy Fallon, Grammys, or touring around the country with singers. I also do session work, which is all the singing and stuff that you hear under film and TV scores. Those are session musicians and I do that quite a bit. I also work as a private voice teacher and as of 2020, a more higher level, I guess, or more professional vocal coach on television shows like American Idol, um, alter ego. And currently I'm working on, I can see your voice. And, um, well, after all of, all of that, oh, I'm also a vocal arranger producer. I, I arrange harmonies, uh, that can be sung as acapella or when you listen to your favorite song and you hear backgrounds in the back, I arrange those. And then after all of that, I'm a solo artist myself. So it's a hefty schedule. <laughs> it's a hefty schedule and you have to be the one that takes initiative to find those opportunities, right? That they're not, no one is out there saying, great India today, you're going to wake up and you're going to do all these things. It's absolutely about you getting out there and hustling and finding the work and proving yourself time and time again. That's the hardest part. I think the, the hardest part, harder than finding the jobs is just getting past yourself. And people say that it's, probably a cliche at this point, but it's true. And once you get to the point where you realize that it's like, oh, okay. So I'm only here. I'm I'm on this earth. I don't know the, our purpose quite yet, but I know we're here to be ourselves. So once you figure out like who you are, that is what you need to, um, to, 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 that's all you need to f- to find the opportunities or to lead yourself to where you are supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, Manifesting and like energy like that is, is really important um, because if you are mentally setting yourself up for success, chances are you'll probably find it um, with, with a good mindset and also taking action. You'll be more inclined to take action uh, when you, when you believe it's achievable. So um, I, yeah, I think the hardest part about being a musician is believing in yourself enough to do anything. Sometimes releasing a song, not even releasing, writing a verse to a song can be like a month long uh, process. Unless you push yourself to to just, you know, do it, be good, 
and, and get it done. Well, speaking of your original music, um, those of you who may have been following our Instagram challenge this month, uh, show, hashtag show your art, the first day was music and we featured a, a clip from a music video that you recently released. Could you tell uh, the people watching at home a little bit more about that song and how that song came to be? Sure. Um, thank you guys so much for posting it. Um, it's a song I wrote called Human. I wrote it after the George Floyd incident and during the yeah the general race riots in the U.S. in 2020. And um, I think a lot of us were really hurt by seeing all these headlines and felt hopeless as we were stuck in, in a lockdown and didn't really feel like we could do anything about it. Physically, we definitely couldn't do much. And being so tied to social media, seeing news uh, and updates from different outlets, it's, it's really confusing to figure out who you're supposed to be following, where you're supposed to be donating, and the list goes on. So, um, and, and as a person of color, I was really, really I think I think I was hurt and emotional on a different level than than I'm used to from seeing headlines like that. I think because of the frequency of it and and the depth of what was going on was just something I hadn't personally experienced in my lifetime just yet. And there were a lot of days where I was I was extremely emotional, very sad. And then after a couple of months I was like, "Oh god, India, you got to you got to do something uh cuz you can't just sit here and sulk." Uh, you know, look for places to donate, blah, blah, blah. I did all of that. But then I was just quiet with my music too. I felt vain for posting my stuff or, you know, the covers that I do. I just didn't feel like anything should be about me. Um, but I was also missing music for that time. So I wrote the exact words that kind of poured out of my mouth when I sat at the piano to write human. Um, if I remember the correctly, the words are like, uh, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, which is an ode to a Negro spiritual. Um, oh God, I'm terrible at reciting lyrics. The the gist of the verse is, you have no idea who I am or who my or what my background is. Um, you know, where is the empathy? Why why do I not des deserve to be treated like literally everybody else, like you would want to be treated? Um, song talks a bit about you know I've got my cell phone here. I videotaped all of it, yet that's still not enough evidence uh, for you to, to do the right thing. Um, and yeah, obviously that came from watching things on social media. We've got all our phones out. Technology is amazing right now, yet none of it is enough to, to convict people and, um, you know, just try our best to do better. So Human has been out for a year, got a music video out, and it's also on all the streaming platforms. And I hope you'll listen. Uh, even though I wrote it uh, in response to the Black Lives Matter movement, I, I wrote it in a way that uh, that also can, can uh, be attributed to any other minority group, anybody who has historically been oppressed. I was even uh, reached out to by a friend who who felt seen by the song um, because of a terrible relationship she had been going through. So it's nice to know that it's a relatable song. And, and I hope if you listen to it, that you enjoy it and just let it speak to you and remind you that you're not alone. It's a really beautiful piece, and I absolutely encourage everyone to check it out. You can check it out um, on the American Civil Arts Instagram, and also uh, I think that Michael has put it in the chat if you're with us today, and India is all across socials. I'll make sure that we get tags for those before we end our interview. Um, you can see her and hear her fabulous uh, singing on across TikTok and Instagram and all these different platforms. We'll make sure to get all of your handles in there. But I wanted to switch lanes just a little bit to talk a little bit more about National Arts and Humanities Month, since it's what we're celebrating today. So my first question is, what piece of art or music has been inspiring you lately? Lately, I've been inspired by soundscapes, I think. The more I get better in my singing and creative ability, I realize 
the song itself is almost as important as the soundscape of the recording that it lives on Mm -hmm. and uh getting into that mixing and like engineering mindset has been really inspiring um because now I have more of an analytical mind to listen to music on the radio um, and just be more specific about what I want my sound to be. So yeah, I'm really inspired by mixing uh, the the science of music. I'm no master at all. It's really been nice observing uh, the mixers and the producers that I work with to try and just get a better idea of what I want to sound like. I love that you bring up the science because I think sometimes I can, I'll speak from my own experience that I can think of science as being this thing that's separate from art, but it is so much involved, right? We talk about, you know, in the education field of like STEAM, of science, technology, um, and and mathematics and, and all those things, but also art, that art is very much a part of that. And those, those things flow together. So I love that you brought that up, that mm-hmm. that is something that we can celebrate in this National Arts and Humanities Month as well. And the people who are behind the scenes, engineering, sound engineers, um, people who work backstage and in theater, all those people are artists in their own mm-hmm. ways too. Absolutely. Um, I, I, this sort of leads into my next question that I had too, which is, what are kind of some unexpected places that you maybe find art in your day-to-day life? That's one of the things I've been trying to encourage people to seek out this month is not just the mm-hmm. art that you expect on hanging on the wall in the gallery or on the radio. Where are you finding art that you might not realize? That's a great question. I was I was trying to figure out the right answer to that and and I couldn't, but something I've been inspired by a lot is nature. And I think I, perhaps that's a good answer to this question because um, well, nature is beautiful and, uh, I'm from the city. So I've taken that for granted pretty much my whole life until I moved to LA, which is also a city, but has a lot more nature, I think, than, uh, New York. And now being here in Atlanta, it's just trees. And I think a lot of music and art has been inspired by nature. So it's no coincidence that, Nature's filled with shapes, colors, and textures all around that you can be inspired from, inspired by. So I think uh, every time that I'm um, traveling to a to a city like this that's filled with nature, I remember years ago I was working in Montana for a couple weeks and left completely inspired because of how much nature I was surrounded by. Um, Yeah, I I think anytime I'm in those scenarios. Yeah, I just I just have an opportunity to create something new. So I would encourage people to step outside, breathe the air, um, you know, take take into account maybe like the gradient of the concrete on the ground or or the or the different or the 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 drive the concrete on the road versus the concrete on the sidewalk and then the fence, the architecture of that. Um, there's so many things. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, that's not nature. Go look at the trees, go to the forest and like, look at the trees, <laughs> listen to the bird song. Um, you know, no, but I, I, I totally get what you mean. And when, you know, when you're in a uh-huh. city and the, the concrete has its own art in a way mm-hmm. of the, the way the cracks warm. And when you have things that pop up through the, through the earth and in a way, I think that's its own bit of artistry you're in my hometown right now of Atlanta so I'm I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying all of the I think they call it I don't know the city of parks or something because there are a ton of parks in Atlanta there's green spaces it's probably not as cool as uh you might like it to be at this time of year but you can start to see the leaves change and all of that um it's definitely my my favorite time of year whether I'm at home or or here in DC Mm -hmm. So before we turn to some of the other projects that our members have been doing for National Arts and Humanities Month, and then we'll take time for questions at the end, I just Mm want to, my final question for you is, what does it mean to you uh, to celebrate National Arts and Humanities Month, and what is important to you as the ambassador this month for National Arts and Humanities? I mean, I I just love art um, in every way. I, 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 it's taken me a long time to realize that my identity as India is, is separate from music, but for the time being, I, I still view both things as kind of one in the same. And so, uh, 
I would like to celebrate art every day as much as I can. Uh, it's very special. I think it is, it's Im important to the framework of our lives. And I will always try and be an advocate for, um, you know, budgets and, and making sure that we have space available for art. Um, and for the listeners, for the viewers watching, uh, I've actually done a couple events with uh, Americans for the Arts over the years. So to be the ambassador is a huge honor for me, um, to be recognized by them. Um, yeah, as, as, uh, as, a, as a great person who's doing stuff in my field. Um, I sang for, yeah, I performed for Lady Gaga when they honored her back, I think it was 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Um, right. and it, it was something around there she's sitting two tables away from me and I'm like, God, I hope I don't mess up these lyrics. And that was the first time I got them right. <laughs> and, uh, that was such an incredible opportunity for me to be, um, to perform for someone like that, to perform her music for her. And I think I came back once for me to Staples a few years later, which is crazy. Got to collaborate with some of my favorite musicians. Um, and now I'm here as an ambassador. So, I mean, it's easy to say, I feel honored. So thank you for having me. We're thrilled to have you. And before mm -hmm. I switch um, gears here again, uh, tell everyone, one, where they can find you across socials. And Michael, we can probably put some of these in the chat. Um, and also, you gave us a little tease of what you're working on right now and your music video, Human, is out. That song is out. What else should mm -hmm. people be looking for from India Carney? So I am working on a release of a song that already exists online called God Forbid. I just never recorded it. So to uh, tease this next wave of original music i'm gonna release god forbid soon i'm hoping for november we're finishing things up here and um yeah please please keep updated with everything i've got i update my instagram pretty often it's just india underscore carney and i'll have all the info there yeah, I was uh, scrolling across TikTok the other day and he popped up on my For You page. And I was like, oh, yes, oh, cool. this, is, this is what I'm looking for. This is the kind of content that I'm looking for today. So oh, wow. India is going to stick around with us for just a few more minutes. And so please feel free to pop questions that you might have for India in the Q&A. And I'm just really quickly going to show you all a little bit of what some of our other members and member organizations are doing for the month of October and National Arts and Humanities Month. So if Michael, if you'll help me share that on the screen. Thank you so much, my little PowerPoint presentation here. You can go on to the next one. So one of the uh, members that reached out to me that wanted to share was the cultural office of the Pikes Peak region, which is in the Colorado Springs area. And they do a ton of amazing stuff for National Arts and Humanities Month. You can check them out at artsoctober.com. Uh, every week this month, they have something going on. Week one, which is last week, was all about visual and culinary arts. This week, I believe we're in this week two, so that's theater and film. Week three is poetry, prose, and comedy. Week four is music and dance. This October, arts and culture takes the center stage throughout Colorado Springs and across the Pikes Peak region as our creative community celebrates Arts Month 2022. Orchestrated annually by the Cultural Office of the Pikes Peak Region, Arts Month elevates the visibility of arts and culture across El Paso and Teller counties by showcasing local talent, providing opportunities for arts advocacy, supporting innovative cross-sector community collaborations, and creating new avenues for arts engagement and cultural enrichment. Our ninth annual Arts Month celebration is already shaping up to be one of our biggest and best ever. So if you are in the Colorado Springs region, I really hope you will check out some of the things they're doing. And even if you're not, take a look at their website. They are really going all out for National Arts and Humanities Month. They have an incredible website with so many resources and links and ability to view things even remotely. So absolutely uh, check them out, especially if you are in the Colorado area. Michael, if you'll go to the next slide for me. I'd love to talk to you a little bit about Act One. Act One is a nonprofit dedicated to providing arts access to students in Arizona's Title I schools. They have celebrated Arts and Education Week, which was just a couple weeks ago, by recognizing an educator who brings the arts to life for their students. This year, their winner is Ben Collingsworth, a preschool teacher at Emily Meshner Early Learning Center in Flowing Wells Unified School District in Tucson, Arizona. 
Mr. Ben Collingsworth has taught early childhood education since 2014. Using performing arts like drama, dance, and puppetry, he engages young children in play to enliven content areas. Mr. Ben's favorite thing to hear from his preschoolers after a lesson or read aloud is, can we act it out now? The Act One Tancer Arts and Education Award is in memory of philanthropist and past Act One member, Bob Tancer. Bob was an active member of the Act One board, believing in the mission of the organization and working to expand the educational depth of the field trip experience. Bob saw the tremendous role the teacher played in making the experience rich and educationally rewarding. Act One chose to honor Bob and his support of Act One by creating the annual Tancer Award to honor a teacher that exemplifies the same beliefs and excels in incorporating arts education into the classroom. The Tancer Award winner represents Act One and educators for the year. So again, congratulations to Ben Collingsworth. That seems like an incredible honor and we are delighted to have Arts One as a part of our Americans for the Arts family and all the work they're doing in Arizona. So congratulations everyone there. Thank you, Michael. Next, I wanted to shout out the Veterans Art Project, which you can find at vetart.org. For National Arts and Humanities Month, Vet Art will be hosting pop-up cafes in Sacramento. Uh, in fact, it'll be one tomorrow on October 12th to further emphasize the importance of arts on wellness and community development at the local, regional, and state levels. Sponsored by California's Mental Health Services Oversight and Accountability Commission, MHSOAC, their pop-up cafes are an innovative project that have an overarching advocacy goal of raising awareness of the critical role that arts play in benefiting the mental health of our veterans, active duty members, and their families. So um, if you are in the Sacramento area and you have some time tomorrow, I encourage you to step out uh, to their pop-up arts cafe. That's an incredible project that the Veterans Art uh, Organization has going on and we love to see their work. You can check out again more information at their website. Next up, the Southern Foodways Alliance. Um, I'd love to shout them out uh, at southernfoodways.org. SFA's 2022 Fall Symposium will be held on October 20th uh, to 20 or 21st to 22nd in and around Oxford, Mississippi at their home at the University of Mississippi. This year, they're asking questions about what barbecue is, who makes it and how the craft is changing. From sliced beef brisket to pulled pork, from tacos to fire roasted vegetables, barbecue speaks to the past, present and future of the South and to the stories of pitmasters, the places they work, the smoke they conjure and the sauces they stir. The Yakna Patafa Arts Council provides the community spaces for community to gather and explore how community traditions and culture is reflected in the food, music, and culture of a place. Uh, I really appreciate the SFA uh, reaching out to us because food is an area that I know I don't always think about as art, but it truly is. Culinary art is an incredible art form, uh, and I personally love barbecue. So I'm afraid I won't be able to make it down to Oxford, Mississippi to taste uh, some of the art that is being made there. But if you are in the Oxford area, please do uh, reach out to them and or just find ways you can celebrate culinary arts uh, in your own hometown. Thank you, Michael. Also, uh, South Florida State College at SF scarts.org. I almost got that out. They've got a bunch of fun uh, events going on for the month of October, including a free performance of Among the Lemon Trees, a classical piano, uh, classical piano music from Spain with Elena Martin and Jose Melatone on Saturday, October 15th at 7 p.m. Uh, there are school performances of Have You Filled Your Bucket? on October 5th and Dr. Kaboom on October 13th. Those all sound fabulous. And then the Museum of Florida Arts and Culture um, on October 5th, they had an opening for artist Bruce March's Marshes Along Glance. So if you are in the South Florida State College area, you should absolutely check out some of their activities. Those all sound amazing. And I think I've got one more. Uh, and this uh, program is something that our government affairs team wanted me to shout out. We've had some really exciting things happen this month when it comes uh, to proclamations. Uh, President Biden officially declared October to be National Arts and Humanities Month, and he reestablished the President's Commission on the Arts, which is a really exciting thing. And then this program, the Arts Are Education effort, uh, is another really exciting thing 
that uh, we've been working on. In 2020, at the outset of the pandemic, 125 national groups, including Americans for the Arts, endorsed the arts education is essential statement, affirming the need for all students to have access to equitable arts education opportunities in dance, media, arts, music, and theater. The statement created by a coalition of national arts and arts education service organizations was prompted by concerns that cutbacks in staff, funding and scheduling would put K through 12 arts education subject areas at risk, particularly for the traditionally underrepresented, those with special needs and students from low income families. While schools throughout the country have resumed in-person school learning and uh, arts education programs are thriving in some communities, quality arts programs continue to be limited or not available at all in many schools. The renamed Arts R Education Statement is now fully fledged national arts education campaign recognizing that all pre-K through grade 12 students have the right to a high quality school-based arts education in dance, media arts, music, theater, and the visual arts. As a well-rounded subject area under federal education law, the Every Student Succeeds Act, music and the arts support the daily well-being of students, foster a welcoming and safe school environment, and encourage inclusivity through multiple pathways for every child's creative work. So this is a really exciting effort that Americans for the Arts is partnering with other organizations on. And if arts education is something that is important to you as it is to me, we really hope you will check them out at artsareducation.org. They have lots of resources for advocacy, ways you can talk to your school board, your local government, um, at moving all the way up to state and federal about ensuring that arts uh, and arts education is really protected in the classroom. And I know that's something that many of you are passionate about. Uh, I really wanted to thank so many of you for joining us today, and we do have the Q&A function. I don't see any questions here, but I do want to give you a moment if you have any questions that you have either for India about National Arts and Humanities Month or any other projects that you or your colleagues might be working on that you would like to have shouted out because so many of you are doing incredible things this month. It is certainly not all about everything that we're doing. It's about what you're doing and uplifting the stories that are happening in your communities about how arts and humanities are being celebrated, honored, and we are celebrating and honoring the artists, the art makers, the grant makers, everyone who comes together to make those things possible. So we are so grateful to have you as a part of our Americans for the Arts family, and uh, we hope that we can do um, whatever we can to uplift, uplift the projects that you were doing because uh, they are really exciting, and I know they are invigorating to us and invigorating to your communities. Um, and I'd love to thank you again, India, for joining us today. Uh, this has been a lovely chat with you to hear all about everything that you are working on. And we really appreciate you being an ambassador, um, having your voice behind National Arts and Humanities Month really makes a difference. And we're just delighted to be working with you. Thank you. Feelings very mutual. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, thank you all again for joining us for today's member briefing. Please stay tuned for more exciting things for members coming later this year, and I will pass it back to Michael. Okie dokie. Just going to clear us off with of the last bit here. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. What a lovely way to spend a Tuesday afternoon. A reminder, this event is going to be recorded and will be available for uh, replay in a few days and shortly after that as a YouTube video. So you can share it out with non-members, which is a new thing we're doing. So we can make sure more people have access to some of these lovely conversations that people are having in our briefings. Uh, be sure to visit us at artsu.americansforthearts.org for other training opportunities. That's on our, it's like ArtsU page for resources, those sort of things. And also that slideshow will be available as a resource on the event page as well. Um, everybody have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for attending.